So you have to keep uh, minutes of your public meetings. As I said before, you have to give notice. You have to give public participation. You have to keep minutes. So minutes have to be kept and made available within five day business days of the completion of the public meeting. A couple of things that you should keep in mind. Um, the contents of minutes are not as elaborate as maybe you expect them to be. It's actually pretty simple. You have to give the names of the people present, the names of other people participating. So typically that would mean you could have 30 people in the audience, five select board members, and only three people participate, come up to the microphone to speak. Those are the people you have to identify in your minutes. You have to keep a brief summary of the subject matter discussed and any final decisions reached. That's the simple, basic right to know law those four minutes have to contain. Um, sometimes, however, you stu certain times you have to have a roll call vote, and that would be going into non-public session, and we'll get to that in a second, but typically that's all that has to be present in your meeting minutes. Now, um, realistically, most boards and bodies are not going to meet within five business days of the original meeting and have a chance to look at the minutes and approve them. In fact, the right to know law has nothing in it that says minutes have to be approved. So although many boards think, well, I don't want our minutes to become public until they've been approved by us, or at least we've been reviewed by us. And realistically, unless you're going to meet within five business days of your meeting that you just concluded then you have the minutes produced, you can't. So you really have to set up a system where someone in the room is going to be assigned the task to draft your minutes. Could be a member of the public body, preferably not. It could be a minute taker or some other person who works for the town. That person is going to produce your minutes. At some point or along the way, you'll develop a relationship and understanding between the board and what that person produces. But that person is going to produce those minutes within five business days. Those are your minutes. Uh, now, does it mean you have to approve those minutes? Well, again, the right to know law doesn't say you have to approve minutes. It just says you have to produce them within five business days. So how do you deal with trying to get the minutes approved and getting the input from the board who actually did the meeting? Because there could be legitimate need, need and reason to uh, reflect amendments or clarifications based upon what was prepared by the person who took them for you in the first place. Um, and so one approach we, we, can, we recommend is the minutes you would produce in five business days, you would mark draft. You could even mark draft until approved by the board. And then at your next meeting, so if your meeting was on February 20th and your next meeting is on March 20th, at the meeting on March 20th, you would have the minutes from February 20th before you. And the approach we think makes the most sense is that if a member of the board says, well, I want to approve the minutes but with some changes, the changes that are then noted are not to the minutes that were marked draft approved. You would note the changes in the minutes of that meeting of March 20th. So you would say in the March 20th meeting, you know, Mr. Buckley made an amendment to uh, change the, the, the draft minutes from uh, uh, February 20th to reflect he said uh, this rather than that, as the case may be. That change is then reflected in the minutes of March 20th. So you, in order to see the entire content of the meeting, you would have to get the first set of minutes marked draft and then uh, the minutes which are uh, uh, produced uh, from the me meeting on March 20th. And you'd have to put the two together. Um, that's one approach. We think it's the best way to go because we would not encourage you to get rid of the draft minutes because they're public records. Um, and you would just need to record the changes from uh, the February 20th meeting and the, and the meeting of March 20th. 